Every day, fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland leave port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions, all to put fish on our plates. It's a new year. In Peterhead, the fishing fleet is sheltering from the winter gales. Just one boat is preparing to sail. On the quayside, fisherman John Buchan is saying farewell to his son, John D. Buchan. He's the first one to leave Peterhead in 2008. Some days wish I was going with him. <laughs> I am very proud of him. He knows the job very, very, very well. well knows. He's a good boy. Good son. John Dee shares the job of skippering Ocean Venture with his father, and he's decided to take a gamble. I could think of better things to be doing in the second of January, I like that. Good to make a pound. I think we're the only ones to have left Peter Reed this year. The weather is just not very nice, but nobody else has left the harbour. So, everything going according to plan. Hopefully we can get in among some fish and get back before the rest of them make a stop. It's 15 hours of hard steaming, 150 miles through the North Sea, before Ocean Venture can reach the remote Norwegian sector. She arrives in the teeth of a Force 10 gale, a familiar sight to first mate Barry Lauder. Every boat is allowed only a fixed number of days at sea. Every day spent dodging storms is a day wasted. Taking a half bit of a risk too far to go and shoot one mates and that. If anything goes wrong, it can turn dangerous quite quick. We went overboard in this kind of conditions. It'd be very hard to get you back. You'd expect to live maybe about 10 minutes, max. When we're trolling in this weather, and you get wires breaking, you get chains breaking, it can turn very dangerous very quick. And it's not very nice out there just now, so I think we maybe just uh, ride out the storm for a little while. 100 miles to the west of Ocean Venture, there is one other boat desperate enough to brave the ferocity of the January storms just off the Shetland Islands, the Arcane. The Arcane is far from home. She hails from Kilkeel in Northern Ireland. Her skipper is Charlie McBride. The weather's nothing but good. But I don't think it's going to get any better, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a chance and try a haul anyway. We've never actually shot on this ground before, but we'll, we'll take a chance anyway and see what comes up. So this job's all about taking risks. Now. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, faint heart, never won a fair lady and all that. The Arcane's first mate is Charlie's son, young Charles. The reason they're fishing in these conditions is simple. The McBrides need to pay off a massive debt. But in waters they don't know, they can't afford mistakes. There's a danger of coming fast on the on the bottom when you're towing. 
you could part a rope, or worst case scenario, you could part both ropes and lose your gear. But hopefully that won't happen. It's about, uh, about 20,000 pounds worth of gear we'll be shooting all together. Come on around, Steve. The Arcane is not the only boat taking risks. With two days lost of ferocious weather, the ocean venture can wait no longer. This is where the knot in my stomach from seasickness. I'm not feeling too great in this bad weather. Comes in excitement. Am I in the right place? Am I going to catch fish? It's still dangerous just now, but I'm taking on a chance, looking at the weather forecast, that the weather's going to ease in the next two or three hours. I certainly don't want anybody injured or running into the ship. It all rests on my shoulders, and I don't want anybody injured. With her nets in the water, Ocean Venture can finally start to make up for lost time. Winter still has Peterhead in its grasp. With few boats at sea, there's little fish in the market and prices rocket. But John Buchan is more worried about the safety of his son and Ocean Venture's crew rather than the bumper prices they could win at market. 100 is bad, 100 is bad, 13 for bad. It's always a bag of mind when he's out there. What's happening? And for the, for the safety and everything, for the crew. I think uh, the weather's been so bad, there's hardly been any boats out. Despite the dangers, John is set on matching his dad as a fisherman. We always go out and try and beat each other. My dad's a great guy, he's, well, him for he's built up his business. He was called King Cod back then, because there's nobody, nobody in Britain could look at him. He was the top dog for catching cod. So we have big boots to fall, but I'm determined on what I do. There's not much will stop me getting to where I want to be and accept this mother nature carry on. On the arcane, Charlie McBride is about to pay for gambling with his net in unfamiliar waters. 400 feet beneath the boat, large rocks are threatening to snag the net. What's happening now? We're hard and fast, giant. Right, Charles, we're hard and fast. Come up till I get our turn here, will you? Unless Charlie can free it, he will lose thousands of pounds in one stroke. No, and, and a poor day, I guess, uh, it, it can be more difficult to get it back. You still have more chance of doing damage, parting a rope or even losing your net. You can see here from this gauge, there's so much, pre so much pressure on the winch that she's actually stopped the winch. The gear is being strained to the limit. Without warning, the rope breaks. You lost it? Just lost the mesh. Miraculously, no one's hurt. But six thousand pounds worth of net is on the bottom of the North Sea. There's that much weight on it, it's broke the swivel. The net's lost. It's gone. We took a chance. It didn't pay off. Not the best start to a trip. 18 hours to see. Not a fish, a bird. Net lost. I gave him the storm 10 coming in. In a minute. We're a dry ship. We don't carry. We don't carry any alcohol aboard. And this is one of the reasons because in a case like this where you lose a net, you'll be awful tempted to go for a wee drum. And maybe a big drum even. 
Losing their net is a hammer blow for the McBrides. Just weeks earlier, they were convicted for selling fish outside their permitted quota. This used to be commonplace among fishermen, but the authorities have cracked down. Twelve boats were prosecuted, but the McBrides were singled out for punishment. Now they must pay £400,000 within six months or face prison. We need to catch fish now more so than ever in our lives. We alone are going to have to face these massive fines when other people that was doing the exact same thing has walked away. It will take the McBrides years to recover. Well, I reckon all the monies that we earned for the past six years was all illegal. There's no word of the percentage that went to the crew or even went to the inland revenue. They're won all of that back. We have six months to do that in or go to prison for two and a half years. They're criminals. We're down but not out. No, we're down but not out. We will get there with the help, well, with the help of God, we won't do it without him, but with the help of God and if we're living in spirit and, and, and continued good health, we'll, uh, we, we will survive. The weather has cleared for Ocean Venture, as one of the biggest white fish boats in the fleet, she can fish in waters where few others dare go. Now, at last, her first haul. We're happy at about 150 boxes a day average. So, touch wood, there's something here. That's a problem. What should be a bulging bag of fish is almost empty. Someone's fouled up. Very poor. For some reason, there was a rope tied around about the, the bag. Someone had obviously put it on there for a reason and forgot to take it back off, so there's no fish to cut in. It was one of those days, the day from hell. This will just be a red pen day. On the arcane, the highly skilled fishing technique that the McBrides use leaves little room for error. It's called seine netting. After launching a boy with a rope attached, the boat sets its course in a triangular pattern a mile wide. In the middle of this triangle, they cast their net. They then return to pick up the boy. As the ropes are slowly pulled together, any fish caught inside the triangle are funneled into the net. It's one of the least environmentally damaging forms of fishing there is. Having lost his main net, Charlie's fishing with his reserve and hauling for the first time. It doesn't look too bad. There's a lot of weed in it, but uh, there looks to be, I don't know, 10, 12 boxes of decent fish. Uh, Mostly haddock, but there seems to be a spring like cod through it as well. So it's quite good. Let's hope it continues. Make up for yesterday. That's a good start. It's not a whole heap of fish, but it's all good clean. It's all good stuff. What's for tea this evening, Keith? Chicken casserole. Chicken casserole. Eight boxes, not bad. But... Okay. Good enough fish to eat. Oh, yeah. definitely good fish. Just need a bit more of them. Okay. All right. Ready, beast, David. Ta da. The financial pressures caused by their debts are a constant worry. The amount of stress we're under for four or five years, me myself, but his time in life, like, that stress isn't good. He's still under the stress to find the monies every month to, to make the repayments on, on the boats and the houses. But, which uh, is bound to shorten somebody's life. The son tells me I'm putting too much pressure on myself lately. In fact, he told me this morning I looked like somebody had a couple of days left to live, but I think he was exaggerating. I was just a bit tired. 
Uh, it's just a wee bit naggered now. Go, of course, I worry about his health. Like, he's getting a bit haggard looking. On Ocean Venture, time is running out and the gamble of leaving port early hasn't paid off. John Dee and his crew have been trapped by yet another winter storm. It wasn't meant to be this bad, so we caught out here. There are over three tons of gear rolling around on the deck. Well, I tell you, get thing tied up first before somebody gets a broken bloody leg. Tidy up, tidy up, look here. John D abandons all thought of fishing. His priority becomes the safety of his crew. Yeah, when they first came on board, they were trying to haul the bog, but the whole boat was going back and forth. But Tom, just to stop, get a thing tied up before there's any injuries. That hopper's there weighs three ton, crashing back and forth. Oh, yeah. A massive wave smashes into the side of the boat. John Dee is thrown 12 feet and into the safety rails. The wave just broke just as it came alongside the boat and just knocked us right over. It was not very nice. So we'll just get to take it easy for a, a couple of hours to get everything sorted up. Let the wind fall away a bit. Still a bit out there just now. So. And for all the fish we got there just now, ten boxes stood for eight hours, torn it. Wasn't really worth it, but I had to try anyway, we were running short of time. Trollermen are 30 times more likely to die doing their job than the average worker. First mate Barry knows how much you have to believe in your skipper. You don't want to go to sea with someone who you don't feel safe with in a real house. That's one, that's one main thing, you know, you've got to, you've got to trust the skipper. If you don't trust them, there's no point in being aboard the boat. There are some skippers I wouldn't sail with, and John D. and John's two of the skippers I would sail with. Um, my life's in their hands. I'm expecting them to get me home alive every trip. What's happening now? What's happening? Isn't it Ed Rider Rose? It's not Ed Rider Rose. Another disaster for the Arcane. Just as she starts to catch fish, she loses the hydraulics that power her winch. Now her reserve net is stranded on the seabed. We're going to have to use the rope rails to heave the gear up. Hopefully that'll work. Well, if it isn't, we may have to leave our gear behind, but that would be the worst case scenario. We've already got one net. First day out, we've already left one net behind us. I don't want to lose, leave this one. It's about 20,000 pounds worth of equipment. So we certainly don't want to leave that behind. Let me battle over the way. Just from top and barrels. But these lightweight rope reels aren't strong enough to lift the net on their own. The crew will have to heave in the gear and ropes by hand. Oh, oh, oh. All two miles of it. The way starboard! Starboard! Right, okay, slow down, slow down. Green say, he green. Green ropes, Shaman. He away the green. What's the problem? Look, the kinks are coming in that fast. You're not heating, you're kicking up. Just jam through the kinks. There's nothing you can do about it. Just keep going. So he away that green a bit. They lose another two hours retrieving the reserve net. McBride's luck will have to change if the Arcane is to start catching fish to repay their debts. Beaten for the moment, they head for Lerwick in the Shetland Islands. Sunday night, we're just arriving in Lerwick. Uh, our parts we've ordered to repair our hydraulics are waiting in the, in the harbour office. The new part has arrived. Will, the ship's engineer, will fit it. This cost us two days now at the minute, and if this repair doesn't fix it, it costs us a lot more. Something up and right now. Exactly the bloody same. 
Pull the gun you now, Willard. The new part doesn't do the trick. The entire hydraulic pump needs to be replaced. Charlie McBride is not a happy man tonight. In fact, he's just about to pull his bloody hair out. The last few days have cost the McBrides £30,000. They will have to wait another 24 hours for the replacement pump to be flown in. But there's an upside. The Arcane's arrival in Shetland coincides with its traditional Viking festival. And far from burning his boats, Charlie's starting to think positively. Something's been saying on me that see, there's always a plus side, tell us the plus side this time we got to see this festival. Never seen it in my life before and probably never seen it again. Meanwhile, the crew rekindle another seafaring tradition. They drown their sorrows. It's dawn on the ocean venture. With the storm blown out, it's perfect weather for fishing. They're almost at the end of the trip, but the ship's hold is barely full. Hello, Jundi. It's time to haul. Oh, beautiful moment for a change. See when it's a white east today then? The net is full of high-value haddock, exactly what they've been searching for. John Dee's already started to think about going home. Couple of holes here, couple of holes there. Bada bing, bada boom. Home. Oh, look at that. That's a good hauler, and... I got Tillich's my father-in-law just now. Aye. And he's got his prices from his office. There's no big haddocks, and the prices for big haddocks are even bigger. That's good news, though. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> after all, all the weather that we went through this trip, I'm really happy it'll pay today. dividends for us. In. Very happy today. Very, very happy. Nice haddocks. Good size. They've finally found the fish. And it's bonanza time on the ocean venture. There's a big one! That's the one we wanted. That's enough. We'll have everything full now. All we need is the prices to be as they were on Friday and we're laughing. Woohoo! We're going home! Going home! Yeah! She's braved the storms and has a hold full of fish. Now Ocean Venture will steam home to see if the market will deliver them jackpot prices. In Peterhead, a sad sight greets Jimmy Buchan, skipper of the prawn trawler Amity one of the fleet's most successful boats. She's broken down at sea and has had to be towed home. This is just about the worst feeling a, a skipper could hear. Is seeing your own boat coming back on the end of a tow rope. That's my whole business and it's now come to a, to a grinding stop. Oh, what is it, Kevin? I'm no engineer, but I went out with a couple of big bangs. And that's not a good sign. It doesn't sound very good when you hear he's saying, he's saying she got out with a couple, of, a couple of bangs and there was a lot of smoke everywhere. Oh, dear. If Amity needs a new engine that will cost over £60,000, Jimmy is forced into a waiting game. The engine's more or less a write-off, and uh, looks like we're going to get a new engine. I think it is in, in the UK. Probably looking at two to three weeks. 
And if there isn't one in the UK? If there isn't one in the UK, we could be waiting two or three months. It's a long holiday. Jimmy's first mate, Kevin, has been with him for seven years. Huh? Now he may have to move on. I'm not hanging around. There's no money coming in, so I'll probably just have to look for another job till this till the boat is ready. Go on another boat. You might make bigger money on another boat. You might change your head about this boat. Things things could change. The pressure's on Jimmy to get Amity back to sea. I've got a boat tied to the pier with a crew aboard it, waiting for, looking at me for answers, and they ain't getting them. Now, Ewing's knew about this problem on Wednesday. This is now Monday morning. I'm wanting action, and I want it now. Jimmy understands that his crew needs to work. I've seen it many times before. A vessel lays up, and the crew scatter up to the four winds and you never get them all back, and, and that worries me because I've got a, a good crew and they've, they've been with me for many years. I'll try and find a job. In Peterhead's fish market, John and John De Buchan are also waiting. Only the prices in the market will determine whether Ocean Ventures bad weather gamble was worth it. Everything's expensive. Lennox, Cod, Coley, Pollock, everything. Makes it all worthwhile. No, no, very proud of it. The final tally grossed the Ocean Venture £70,000 for the 10 day trip. Taking the gamble, get out in the weather, has been paid off. Delighted. In the Shetland Islands, the Arcane's hydraulic pump has finally arrived. That certainly is looking promising. 24 bar. Right old girl, us, stand by to throw her up. The Arcane is back in business, and the first thing Charlie wants to do is find his lost net. We're getting the uh, retrieval gear ready now to go and see if we pick up the net that we lost our, our very first haul. Now that we're back to our work again, I feel a bit of an adrenaline rush again. We're maybe going to gonna start uh, earning some money, catching some fish. Next time on Trollerman, Kevin's been enjoying himself on another boat. Will Jimmy get him back? It's just easier work. It's a lovely job to be at. Cooking with Fraser Burr's youngest skipper in a Force 9 gale. I feel like a ballerina, dancing about like a... And we discover whether Charlie can turn around his trip from hell and retrieve that net from the bottom of the North Sea. So, as... Uh, Baldrick said to Blackadder, I have a cunning plan. 